Hey, how's everyone doing? Zero here. In today's video, I want to teach you how to play Cloud Strive in Smash Bros. Ultimate, who is my favorite character to play so far. I absolutely adore playing him, and I want to teach you how to play him because for me, he's so much fun, and I want you to have the same level of fun as I do. So in terms of Cloud, let's just get straight to the basics. Now, Cloud is a Swordsman character, and that means that the majority of his attacks have store properties, which means that his hitboxes are disjointed. What I mean with a disjointed hitbox is that if an attack were to come through, I can usually arrange this attack with just my sword simply because it's not connected to my hurtbox. So like even if the attack were to hit Klaus' sword, you're not necessarily in trouble. That's the advantage that a sword provides as principle. Now, the most unique mechanic that Cloud had is Limit Break, which comes straight from Final Fantasy VII. So the way limit break works is that you have three ways to obtain limit. The first one is that you can simply press down B and the limit will charge. It takes quite a bit to charge, as you can see. However, you also build limit break by dealing damage or by receiving damage. If you deal 150% of damage, you will automatically build an entire bar of limit. If you take 100% of damage, you will also build one whole bar of damage. What this usually means is that since in a match you will have a combination of charging limit, doing some damage, and taking some damage, it means that in pretty much every stock you're going to have an average of about one limit play per stock. Which means that you really have to know how to use limit break. Now, what does limit break do as a principle? What limit break does is that it upgrades all of Cloud special. So, for example... This is Limit Break Cross Slash. Compared to normal Cross Slash, as you can see, Limit Break Cross Slash deals more damage, more knockback, and it also comes out, um, the entire thing comes out regardless if you hit it. Whereas regular Cross Slash, you have to actually hit it on an opponent or up a shield for the whole move to come out, and you have to press B multiple times, whereas Limit Cross Slash will just completely come out regardless if you whiff it or not. Then you have a Finishing Touch, which will replace Down B. Instead of charging limit, you will do finish and touch, which is an extremely lethal attack that actually does about 1% damage, but it kills really early, killing most people in the game around 60 to 80%. Um, or some like characters, you can kill them around 50 something. Then you have climb hazard, which when you have limit climb hazard, the main advantage that you get is that it travels much further, making clouds recovery that much better. So for example, that's a lot farther than simply this. So that's a big advantage in terms of recovery. Finally, for Blade Beam, you have a very, very powerful and damaging projectile that goes really far compared to regular Blade Beam, which also goes pretty far, but Limit Blade Beam goes really far out. Also, when you have Limit on, which, by the way, only lasts about 15 seconds once you obtain it, compared to Smash 4, you can just keep it forever until you use it or you die. This game, you only get to keep it for 15 seconds. It also grants Cloud extra fall speed, which means he falls faster, making his playstyle a little bit faster because he lands quicker to the ground with aerials, making his pressure that much better. Now, in terms of general playstyle, Cloud, the way he plays is very neutral based. You have to really, very much focus on how to play neutral, how to pretty much break down your opponent and how they like to play neutral for you to succeed as Cloud. Cloud isn't all about having crazy combos. But he's more about of a momentum-based character and all about neutral and fundamentals. So the way I like to play neutral with Cloud is that Cloud has four moves that are key to his uh, department. The first one is backer, cross slash, border, and limit. So the way I the way I try to pretty much just structure my neutral is that I start off the match by dashing around mainly because cloud's dashing is just really good it covers a good amount of ground so you can try to get the feel for your opponent by dashing around as you understand if they're jumping if they're retreating or whatnot i like to apply some pressure now something wonderful that they change in this game is that every character has decreased lag in their aerials which means that cloud's forty, which mainly used to be a finisher of swords or just a move that for the most part got replaced by backer but it had some use especially with the spike it's actually not one of your main tools to pressure in neutral it's because it has very little cooldown and because it has so much range you're actually just safe from doing it you can pretty much hit someone with cloud support it on block and it's safe pressure for do for you to do so 
And also, if you land the Sporter, you can actually combo Sporter into Cross Slash. You can also combo it into Fort Tilt, which I like to do a lot. And even Up Tilt as well. So as you can see, Forder is pretty much your gateway into pressuring your opponent. You can a lot of the time just short hop into your opponent with a Forder and pressure the shield. And if you obtain a hit, you can go for a tilt, an up tilt, forward tilt, side B, or you can go for a grab if you think they're going to stay on block. You can even go for down tilt if you think they're going to roll away from you, which is a tool that I like to use a lot if people prefer to play defensive against my cloud. You can also do the exact same kind of pressure with Backer as well, because Backer is also insane on shield, and he has a lot of range as well. Very, very generous range, and it's also pretty strong as well, killing most characters off the side of the level around 100 or 110. So, you can still land Backer into Cross Slash. You can still land Backer into Fort Till. Backer into Up Till. And in some instances, you can even go for backer jab as well um, i think the most useful ones are backer into cross flash which does a ton of damage or backer into up tilt because you get follow-ups out of it in case they move away from you or not too much into you you can also um fort tilt which i find it to be more consistent especially if your opponent is lighter or they just kind of just move away from you and up tilt doesn't really land they move away from you fort tilt has the range necessary to do that so your main strategy is going to go around dash around fort uh forward air backer pressure with that then as you start getting your opponent some hits in you're going to be charging limit here and there i recommend charging limit not that much simply because it only lasts for 15 seconds you want to make sure you have limit you have to time your limit so you get limit break um around when they're like above 100 or 80 percent so you can actually go for a play um to get a kill if you get it too early you will simply waste it when you need it and if you get it too late then you might die before you can use it so you have to learn how to time limit break and you can calculate this by understanding that you get limit break by dealing 100 150 percent damage by taking 100 percent damage or by charging so what i do is that i start the match i charge a little bit of limit like around here really and then i just fight normally and then as i get to high percent they're like 80 i'm a probably a 60 70 or something like that it's about the time where i'm about to get a limit play then i can just charge up the little rest and then go for a play that's the way i like to time it if not um if you're fighting characters that can gimp you, characters that can throw you off the level or kill you, like Pikachu or Pichu, I recommend having limit probably around the middle. Um, so then in case that they're hitting you and comboing you off the level, then you can probably charge the rest off the level and then go for a upbeat recovery so you don't die early. So that's a good compromise to stay safe. Now, as you start getting your opponent above you with forward air backer, uh, we can move on to the juggling presses where Cloud is really strong. Now, Cloud's upper still has humongous range, and you can still juggle opponents really quick. And in fact, it's a move that is not just good to land it and come more into itself, but it's a move that you can also use repeatedly, as you can see right there. Now, the differences they made with Smash 4 is that Cloud's upper no longer has a very ridiculous hitbox below the sword. Um, you can see this, for example, when Smash 4, you were able to do a short hop upper and fast pull it. And then, for the most part, it will hit the strong hit, and then you will be able to get a juggle. As you can see, the sword clearly is missing here because there's a hitbox missing right here. Um, however, you can still kind of just sure hop, upper, and delay it a little bit. You can still land the upper, but it's not nearly as good as it was in Smash 4. However, if you land this upper, you still get a bunch of rewards. You can you can upper again, you can up till, you can cross slash, you can do pretty much almost anything you want off of it. So it's still extremely rewarding. If you do land it keep in mind though against characters that are short like pikachu and pichu it's almost impossible to land this upper uh one really cool thing though about upper is that it actually has combos if you land the weak hitbox which you can trigger by let's say you do an upper and then you fast fall into the weak into the weak hit it takes a little bit of practice to get down but that's kind of how it looks like you see how samus kind of bounce up a little bit um so let's say for example i put samus at let's say 100%. I'm just going to give you an example combo right here. Then I get Lemon. I'm going to go for a weak upper hitbox. For example, that's a, nice, that's, a, that's a way where you can land a limit play. I could have replaced that with like maybe cross slash, for example, for a kill or anything else. But it's just an or maybe an, even another upper as well. 
But as you can see, uh, weak, la weak land and upper can actually combo into very interesting things. Um, in fact, you can do some even cooler combos where, let's say I put Samus at 30. You can down it there, and that was a true combo right there. As you can see, that could be a very useful combo out of a read. So once you have your opponents up in the air, Cloud's objective mainly is to win neutral, but then get your opponent above you. Once you have your opponent above you, you can start pretty much covering their bases with upper line up, kind of move around them, just try to chase them up in the air, in the ground. And then as they're approaching the, the ground, you start throwing up tilts. It covers above the platforms as well, um, completely above you. And you can do it out of a dash as well. So very, very useful. If you have a hard read coming through, you can up smash, which pretty much covers the entire platform. And it's very, very powerful. So that's also a good read to keep in mind. And since you're juggling and you're getting plays around, you're doing damage. You probably took some damage earlier on probably around the time where you'll have a limit read and then you can just kind of go for it and then add a kill so pretty much cloud is a momentum is we win neutral by using back or forder we get our opponent in the air we upper we do aerials and then as we get limit as they're getting into a danger zone in terms of percentage of damage then we go for a limit play that's why i mean what the, the cat gets transitions from neutral to momentum very often because you have to focus on having a solid neutral to have the opportunity to have momentum and once you have momentum you have to be able to keep it on um, that's why Cloud sometimes is a very hot and cold kind of character because either he's doing really well, he's doing all this stuff right, or he's not doing so well, he's not winning neutral, he's getting games, he's getting thrown off the level, um, you're using limit defensively, that's when Cloud kind of falls apart. Another tool that you can use in neutral is Blade Beam. So like in slower matchups where people are refusing to approach you, you can throw out a few uh, Blade Beams here and there to kind of just force them to approach you. And I find that to be very useful in any matchups where they're just trying to force me to approach. And I don't feel comfortable with it quite yet. You just throw a few of them and usually it kind of forces them to approach, especially because Blade Beam is so much better um, and useful in this game than it was in Smash 4. Another note to keep in mind as you're juggling, however, is that Cloud's upper is frame 8 and Cloud's neutraler is frame 5. What this means is that neutraler will usually come out faster. So let's say you're juggling your opponent and you don't think you have time to throw out an upper, which has a little bit of a startup now. You can simply throw out the neutraler to simply cover your bases quicker. And neutraler usually will either come into itself or throw them into a platform and you can kind of chase them around and then back her again as well. So I think it's a really good way to just kind of mix things up. In terms of kill options, Cloud has a few options. As you have limit, you can go for a few things. For example, I can put Samus around... 80%. For example, that's an option option to get a kill. At some lower percents, you can even go for cro uh, for finishing touch. You go for climb hazard as well if they go really high up. I also find it useful to do a sure hop into the down air, and then you can kind of fast fall into it. But you have to wait a little bit before you fast fall. So you can like sure hop down air, wait a little bit, and then fast fall. If you time it correctly, you will get the land and hitbox, but also fast fall making you harder to defend against. There's an example of it. In terms of grab options, Cloud has a frame 9 grab, which means that it's not the fastest grab. And this means that every time you have shield pressure, you don't really are supposed to go for a grab out of shield because Cloud's grab is actually slow for a standing grab. But not only that, is that you don't really get that many rewards off of grabs. They nerf Cloud's down throw. You have not as many follow-ups or pretty much nothing out of it really it's not nearly as good as it was in smash 4. um fourth throw and back throw are just positional throws you don't really get too much out of it but then i find personally the best throw that he has is up throw mainly because you can actually juggle out of it so you get a bent out of it and it's also cloud's most damaging throw which to me is the most useful one so at least you get damage if you do get a grab and then you can go into an up fill, into an up smash, an up air even. It has more uses than any other throw. So I recommend going for up throw in case you get grabs. So in general, try to avoid grabbing too much simply because Pratt doesn't have the most rewarding grab. And his grab itself isn't quick enough a lot of the time. This character has frame 6 grabs, which are much better. But Cloud has a frame 9 grab, so that doesn't help him too much. When recovering off the level, there's ways that you can make Cloud's recovery be a little better. First of all is that you should never recover above the platform or you should never recover in ways that 
you seem to just up be from far away from the platform and then drift into the level pretty much just asking to die in the situation um cloud's recovery mainly comes down to his double jump and he's up b really that's all you're gonna have off the level most of, more often than not now how you can optimize this is based on how quick you are able to predict the danger on how you can pretty much be aware of how your opponent is going to try to kill you some characters are going to drop through the platform and try to fourier you some characters will try to spike you throw a projectile at you but people will try to destroy you off the level and as a cloud player you have to be ready to assess the situation and come out winning so one way i recommend it is that you have to save your double jump as much as you can as soon as you lose your double jump and you get hit out of your rb it usually is a lost stock but if you have your double jump and you get hit you can still recover more often than not so your double jump is pretty much your last resort also try avoiding air dodging too early i recommend waiting until the very last second possible to air dodge to the ledge to do things like this mainly because if you air dodge too early then you can't air dodge again which means that if your opponent sees that you air dodge all the way over here they can just hit you for free because they know you can't really air dodge again until you land so that's a big big disadvantage Finally is you have to try to recover as low as possible. This is because it's much harder to hit this angle up B than hitting something like this. You can also sweet spot Cloud's recovery where if you'll be next to the ledge, Cloud actually just grabs the ledge. I find this extremely useful when you have a wall and then you wall jump into the wall and then up B. This is mainly because let's say you don't want to up B from over here. You will simply just jump into the wall and then up b and this prevents you from getting from, from being vulnerable and just getting hit with this rising up b that you can actually spike uh, if you're fighting an experienced player but if you wall jump on up b it makes it so much harder to punish they people can still snipe the wall jump but it's much more difficult than this other than that it just comes down to sometimes as a collab player you will get game his recovery is not the best. Just be mindful of the fact that there's times where you will die. Well, a lot of the time you can also make it better by dodging a lot of the usual stuff and also just being careful in general. Um, this is why I recommend holding the center stage with Cloud because it makes it harder for you to get thrown off the level. So try not to stick around the edges too long simply because any hit will knock you off far off into the level. Whereas that if, if you're in the middle, the hit will be less useful because you're not as close to the ledge. So then it's easier to recover. As a final note, in terms of uh, smash attacks, Cloud's up smash is most useful when people are landing on top of you, when you see them air dodge, or when you see them landing on the platform. This one up smash is most useful because of its range. Force smash is really good for roll reads, or when people dash into you for a grab or a jump, you can just kind of dash back in. And then force smash, I find it most useful in those situations. And finally, down smash is when people whiff a grab or a spot dodge. Or something near the ledge you just down smash because it's most useful smash attack in that situation because it's stronger than back throw you can just charge it even a little bit but regardless if you see someone make a mistake near the ledge and your face you, your back is facing towards off the level then down smash is one of your best friends with that said those are the basics of cloud i hope that this video was useful for you to learn cloud thank you so much for watching make sure to subscribe to my channel seven videos a week i'm doing my best to Get the most amount of uh, Smash Bros. Ultimate content out there, guides, how-tos, and just pretty much anything that can help you guys learn and enjoy this game further. With that said, thank you so much for your support. You have a wonderful day. I hope that I'll see you around the next video, right? Take care, everyone. Bye-bye. Thanks for watching.